Earlier today, I interviewed Ken Hoagland, a speaker at today's rallies and author of The Fair Tax Solution. He's also chairman of the Online Tax Revolt, and I asked him what that was. Well, the Online Tax Revolt is a chance for Americans in every hometown across the country to add their voice to say, hey, we know that the income tax system is terribly broken, terribly unfair, but it's a digital expression of that. You pick a digital avatar, graphic representation of yourself. You march across the country, in this case to Washington, D.C. today, April 15th. Uh, more than 270,000 people so far over the last four weeks. And there you join live tax protests and add your voice to this growing American chorus that <laughs> We don't want this kind of a tax system. We know it bedevils every taxpayer. It's too complicated, too expensive uh, just to obey the law, and terribly unfair. And we want something better. And it when is they... flat taxers, fair taxers, uh, Reagan tax cutters, all of the tax reform ideas, and everyone who just knows something has gone terribly wrong with our government, and the income tax system is what fuels it. Tell me about that uh, split, though. You can get a, a lot of people to, to dislike the tax code, um, but there has always been difficulty then on getting people to agree on the different kinds of remedies. Right. Um, and, and that always seems to be the hang-up. We come around every year and we all complain about the tax code, those of us particularly who have to fill it out ourselves. Right. And then we have this question of, well, but do we have a VAT? Do we have a flat tax? And, right. and so how, how does that problem get solved? You are so right. Uh, that has always been the problem up until now. The online tax revolt represents a kind of a wonderful development. It is a bringing together of all of the different tax reform ideas we haven't quite sorted out, which is the best one yet. I passionately believe that it's the fair tax, but I respect Steve Forbes and Dick Armey and all those who embrace the flat tax. I really look back at the history and see what Ronald Reagan did to simplify the tax code. We'll get down to what the best solution is later. The wonderful thing that's happening right now is we're putting aside those differences because we're united by the more important idea that this tax code is broken and must be fixed. And given the self-interest in Washington, it will not be fixed unless we all come together and put that kind of citizen pressure on our legislators. I want to ask you about self-interest um, in a moment, but let me. Uh, there have been some polls that show uh, that that a majority of Americans, 62 percent, I believe, in one recent poll I looked at, thought the taxes they paid were fair. In a, in a CBS poll, a recent poll we did of Tea Party supporters, a majority thought the taxes they paid were fair. What do you think accounts for that? Well, I'm not sure. Could it be that 48% of the population aren't paying any income tax at all? Maybe that affects it. But there are federal, so many... Federal income tax. There are federal income tax. There are so many obvious uh, just examples of how broken it is. You just mentioned uh, the headache of filling out your tax forms. That cost us all $310 billion last year before we ever paid a penny of tax. Uh, Married people are taxed at a higher rate than singles living together. Income is commonly uh, double and triple taxed. We're giving foreign producers an advantage over the Made in America label because of built-in taxes in the cost of American products. The Congress is selling off two to three tax breaks a day. They have been for 25 years. 18,000 changes in the last 20 years. It has bloated the tax code to indecipherability, 67,500 pages of regulations. Now any law, I'll just put it in the most simple way, any law that cost $310 billion to obey is just flawed on its face. When getting to, back to your notion about uh, self-interest, the reason in a lot of cases that uh, the tax code is so huge is that everybody wants their little special piece of the pie. And right. one of the reasons the tax conversation breaks down a lot of times is that if you talk, say, about a flat tax and you say to people, well, your, your mortgage interest deduction will disappear or the, the, uh, the tax treatment for corporations that provide health care would disappear in a system that kind of 
took out all the old special deals and, and tried to build from scratch. And people, tend, when they hear that, um, perhaps in the mixed up way it gets uh, translated in the, in the modern media, they think, oh my goodness, so I don't want to lose my, the benefits I get for deductibility of my mortgage interest. How, how do you get people out of that mindset who may hate the tax code but, but like the provisions that benefit them? Well, with all due respect to the flat tax and the Reagan tax cutters, and I do respect both movements, the fair tax, the, the tax reform that I so passionately believe in, allows every American to take home 100% of their paycheck without withholding or payroll taxes first deducted. And when you compare that with taking a small percentage off your taxes for the interest you paid on your home mortgage, deduction or your home mortgage payments, uh, that's a lot better. <laughs> if everyone takes home everything that they're earning, we permanently stimulate the economy. We lift taxation off of labor, savings, and investment. Those are the things that make the economy grow. And Nobel Prize winning economist and 80 others have said, you go to the fair tax, you're going to see somewhere between 10 and 15 trillion dollars of private investment come flowing into this country right away, well, that translates to we all go back to work. We are the most productive workers in the world. There is just no reason for the unemployment figures that we're seeing in Michigan and other places if we get our tax code out of the way. Ken, Ken a final quick question. Uh, Paul Volcker has suggested, the president, one of the president's economic advisors has suggested looking at a value-added tax. What was your reaction to that? Uh, a bad one. Uh, Value-added tax is the darling of most European countries. Mr. Volcker and apparently people in Mr. Obama's administration are looking at it on top of the income tax. That is unthinkable. It hides the tax inside retail prices. We are already taxed enough. Let's just put it in a simple way. It takes money out of the economy that could grow the economy and get us back to work and gives more money to government. Now, is this a government of, by, and for the people, or are the people existing of, by, and for the government? Okay. Now, that moves us in exactly the wrong direction. Ken Hoagland will have to end it there, chairman of the Online Tax Revolt. Thanks very much for being with us. Thanks, John.